We all go through hardship. It could be an illness, a divorce, a prodigal child. So when we come back, we're going to talk about when life hurts. I'm Monica Schmelter, and I wanna thank you for joining me on Bridges today. Today, we're going to take a look at when life hurts. We all know that we go through hardship, there can be crises in our life, and we all respond differently, and that's fine. I, I just wanna go over some things in the Bible that can kind of help us navigate a crisis and a tough time. And the first thing I wanna share with you is that if you get bad news, a call in the middle of the night, a, a relationship has fallen apart, it's okay to need a minute. So many times when we're in crisis, we get in crisis mode and we wanna work as hard and as fast as we can to make it all go away. I know, cause I have done that many times. Probably the better thing to do is to just take a minute. Take a minute to pray, to calm yourself down emotionally and physically. Um, I think sometimes we overlook the obvious. We overlook what God tells us. We think that the big fix and that the better life is that we do something about that. And while we do have responsibility in this life, there are things that we cannot fix. They're outside of our control. And in those times, it's best to take a minute and I'll share with you out of Psalms 4610 out of the New Living Translation, be still and know that I am God. And that tells us, like that gives us the clue that there are moments in our lives that we need stillness, that we need quiet. Now that goes against everything of our culture and it might go against your personality. I know that I'm a type A person, so I just wanna keep working. I just wanna make things happen. I just wanna fix it. And some of us are wired that way and that can be good in certain situations, but in others, not so good. So I wanna say, if you're in crisis mode right now, you have heartbreak going on, emotionally distraught, to remember that it's okay to take a minute and to be still and know that he's God. And then, to take the problem straight to God, not straight to social media, uh, not straight to texting all your friends or calling all your friends. And, and none of those things are bad. But the thing is we have to start with God and invite him into the situation and to ask him to give us wisdom when life hurts. You know, that is one promise in the Bible that we know gets answered every single time. He says, if you ask me for wisdom, I will give it to you and I won't find fault with you. So the prayer for wisdom is a very wise prayer when life hurts, because we all know that when life hurts, we can get into a mode of some very dark and negative thinking. We might say things that we would later come to regret but if we will take a moment, take a minute, pause, be still, and then take that problem straight to God, we have a, a much better chance of navigating those when life hurts seasons. Look with me at Hebrews 4 and verse 16, again, out of the New Living Translation. It says there, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God there we will receive mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. This is an invitation, so think about it. The creator of the universe, the alpha, the omega, the first, the last, the one who was, who is, and is to come, he invites us and he says, come. And he says, come boldly. Think about that, come boldly before the creator of the universe. And then it says, gracious God. You know, so many times people will settle on a wrong image and a wrong opinion of God. I know that when I was growing up, I thought God was just up there in heaven, just waiting to catch me doing something wrong. And he was just mad because I did so many bad things. And I want to say this, God is not mad at anybody. He's just not. He loves us. Even people that are not serving him right this moment, his love is extended to them. Now, are they saved? Do they have a relationship with him? No, 
but they are loved. And when we understand that when we have Christ as our savior, that we are loved, we are his. We are his sons and we are his daughters. And he looks at us in those seasons when life hurts. And he says, come, come to me boldly. I'm a gracious God. He's a good heavenly father. He says, come to me boldly and I will give you grace and help when you need it most. This means that in your darkest hours, he is willing to give you grace when you need it most. There are things that I have been through in my life that I would have just never imagined that a nice Christian girl like me would have that happen, but it happened. And I didn't have control over that, but I do have 100% control over how I respond. And I had to learn that when life hurts, I have to stay steady and trust God. I have to sometimes say, God, I have no idea what to do, but I will keep my eyes fixed on you. That's hard for me because I'm more of a um, type A emotional person, not really like the best kind of steady, but I've learned to steady myself. I've learned to be still. I see the value of it. I'm not trying to row my own boat, so to speak. I'm letting God come into the situation, come into my life, and to help me navigate through that hurtful season. And in those darkest moments, I can say this unequivocally. <laughs> he has given me grace for the moment. He has given me grace for hard situations that I never thought that I would be in. He's given me help and mercy. God is a turner. He really is. And he turns things around when we seek him and pray. And that doesn't mean that we won't ever have another season of when life hurts. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that we won't have an illness or we won't go through a financial reversal or have a prodigal child. What take the problem straight to God is saying, and what Hebrews 4.16 is saying, is when life hurts, come to God. Come to God wholeheartedly. Don't try to couch it with pretty little prayers and, oh, you know, it could be worse. Well, it could be worse, but that's not the point. The point is that you're in a crisis. The point is that you're in a season of when life hurts. So whether it could be worse really has nothing to do with the situation. What we do is we steady ourselves and we commit ourselves to the faithful shepherd, to the faithful judge. And we say, God, not my will, but your will will be done. Now, that can be scary because we don't, it shouldn't be scary. But I can say even after all these years of serving God, sometimes I grapple with, okay, I want your will, but please don't let that happen. And sometimes that does happen. But he's shown me time and time again how faithful he is. And he's shown me time and time again how he knows the big picture. And in these seasons where it just seems that life is falling apart and that life hurts and that you're heartbroken and that you think that things will never change and that they'll never get better, he will come and he will visit you. He will comfort you. The word says if we draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to us. The next thing in a season of when life hurts, is pray wholeheartedly. I can't say enough about the power of prayer. When you look in the Bible, it is filled with scripture and pa passages that tell us to pray without ceasing. It tells us to pray and not give up in Luke 18, 1, and it tells us that story of the persistent widow. And there's something about persistence it, because persistence speaks of faith. Persistence speaks of, I'm not going to let this go. I'm believing you, God, for this. Now, it does have to be the will of God. We can't just go and ask for this, this, and this. Like, he's not a celestial Santa Claus. He's God. He's holy. But he loves us, and he tells us to pray. He tells us to call upon his name. The book of James 516 out of the New Living Translation says it like this, the earnest prayer of a righteous person 
has great power and produces wonderful results. So when life is hurting and you think you don't want that to happen, but that has happened, it says that the prayer of a righteous person is effective. It produces wonderful results. Sometimes the situation that we're looking at, that's not the final result. God is still working. We don't know all what he's doing. I've heard people say, well, I think the reason this happened to me is this, this, and this. I don't know that I can tell you um, why everything in my life happened. There are some things that I just truly don't know, but I trust him because I know that he has my best interests at heart, that his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. His ways are much different than my ways, so I trust. And I realize that life on this earth, right? It's not gonna be this way, always. There is gonna be eternity in heaven for all who believe in Christ. And in that day, all will be made right. I don't know how that will happen, but the Bible tells us in heaven, there's no more death, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more tears. The old order of things will have passed away and we will have all things made new by God. So we always have to, in those seasons when life hurts, to remind ourselves of an eternal perspective. These crises come, sometimes they stay a long time, sometimes they're here and then they go, but when life hurts, we can trust him. When life hurts, we can say to ourselves, it's okay to take a minute. I'm gonna take this problem straight to God and I'm going to pray wholeheartedly and believe that my prayers will produce wonderful results. I'm just about out of time in this segment, but in the next segment, we're gonna open up conversation about when life hurts and we're going to talk specifically about prodigal children. My guest will be Lane Lawson, and she is a best-selling author, and she also has a podcast called Warfare Parenting. And she is going to share not only her expertise, but she is going to share her personal story of being a mom to three children who were all prodigals. So she's been there, she knows what it's like, she prayed her way through. And so I just encourage you to stay with us today on Bridges so that you can hear all about that. I'll be right back with more on When Life Hurts. If you enjoy watching Bridges, you can join Monica on Facebook for all the extras. Just visit Facebook and search for Monica Schmelter TV. At Monica Schmelter TV, you'll get a look behind the scenes. You'll learn secrets from the studio and you'll be among the first to know what's coming up next on Bridges. Best of all, you can connect with Monica for prayer and share what topics you'd most like to see on Bridges. Monica would love to connect with you. Don't give in. God's word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith, and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. We almost died a hundred different times, probably. We were angry. I remember having my first drink. I'm living in a penthouse, party king now. Ecstasy, molly, mushrooms. I had a lot of demons, acid. Started getting into cocaine. Something drove me out. I was wrapped up in a sting operation. My wife would get scared of the phone ring. Say it was living hell. The closer we got to breakthrough, the more Satan would attack. That was really hard. If you are just joining us today on Bridges, we're going to talk about those seasons in life when life hurts. And if you have a prodigal child or you know someone who does, you know that that is a very painful season, especially for Christian parents. If you've raised your child in church, you've watched the joys of raising your children and you have dreams and you think about all the things that your kids are going to do and then they walk away from their Christian faith. That is a very painful season. And we're here today to talk about really what a widespread issue this is 
And joining me just to help us unpack this and go through this is Lane Lawson Kraft. Now she's a best-selling author, an award-winning author. She's also the host of the of Warfare Parenting. Let me get that out. And she's just gonna help us go through this. Uh, not only does she have that expertise, but she has personal experience as a mom. And so Lane, I'm, I'm so grateful that you could come today. Thank you so much, Monica. This is such an urgent message, yes, isn't it? Is. it? Mm -hmm. And it's so much more widespread than what people think. I think that a lot of times people, um, want to isolate because you look at everybody else's kids and they seem to be doing so well, at least on Instagram, right? Right. Mm -hmm. right. So you've raised your children in church. I, I did the same, you know, my husband and I with our son and you saw them walk away. As you, if you've studied this issue, what do you see like as the root causes? What makes this happen? Because I think a lot of times we think it's bad parenting yes. and we have guilt. Right. Well, I first want to say you can never plan for this, Monica. Right. I mean, we had these dreams. We had these little babies. Oh, they're going to be a doctor. Oh, they're going to be this. And they're going to be perfect, right? Of course they are. <laughs> so when that child that you love so dearly, you had such high hopes for, betrays you or makes a self-destructive choice, it breaks your heart, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It's heartbreaking. And, you know, there are people that get calls in the middle of the night. If you're watching your adult child make self-destructive choices, I mean, you're just praying that they will stay alive, yes. right? Just just praying that somehow, some way, this will all work out. And parents blame themselves. Now, no parent's perfect, right? And you said it, right? None of us plan for this. No. We all think it won't happen to us, right? We've got them in church and they're memorizing all their verses and they're coloring, right? They're right. doing all of that and they love Jesus. And then... Yeah. yeah, yes. And so you said something very important too, you know, um, kids today, I mean, they're under so many pressures. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nothing what we've ever seen before. And that's why this is so important that we are discussing what do we do? What is a prodigal? Mm -hmm. how, how, do you, how do you maneuver and navigate through right. it? It's just so important, Monica. It, it really is. And, and you talked about the culture, right? There was always peer pressure, but I think it's worse now and the comparison trap, like everybody looking at other people's social media and imagining that they have it better. What about their home life? Does that have anything to do with it? Well, it can. You know, mm -hmm. we, none of us thrive in chaos, do we? No. Nope. And we do serve a God of order. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I do think chaotic homes, which, you know, I will tell you at times in my life, my husband and I are entrepreneurs, it was a little chaotic. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be real here. Yes. Uh, you know, paying the bills, uh, doing all the things that we were yeah. doing. Because life is a lot. It is. You know, I remember like in college, like I just knew how my life was going to go. And there wasn't going to be any chaos. Okay. So like you, I can say that there was chaos at times. Yes. And I deeply regret that. But that's where I was at yes. that time. And I've shared openly that I really struggled in my 20s and early 30s with anger and with rage. And I didn't, you know, I didn't always respond as well as I could have. And so that chaos, of course, can affect our children. Sure, sure. And I'd like to say this to Monica. It was a real effort for Steve and I. Now, remember, I didn't have just one prodigal. I had three, yeah. and they were all in their teenagers. The Lord blessed me with three kids in less than three years. <laughs> so uh, I look at it as a blessing. But uh, So I had, you know, at one time, a 15-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 12-year-old. And it was just unbelievable. I can't imagine. Well, we made a cognitive decision. When we started seeing the pressures mm -hmm. that these children were under, uh, we decided that we better stand together. Do you mm -hmm. know how kids... They, they put you at odds. They'll That's go to right. dad uh, and say, dad, mom says, or can you? And mm -hmm. so we made a cognitive choice that we were going to back each other up, Monica. Yes. And you know, it's scriptural. It says a house divided will not exactly. thrive. Exactly. So, uh, so that was another thing. I think if I could encourage parents today that are struggling with, with children that are just making wrong choices, mm -hmm. get with that husband or father and say, we've got to get on the same page right. right now. Right. And I think sometimes when we position that as this is for the good of the child, yes. like even if the couple are no longer married or never right. were married, like get together and decide we're going to put our drama and trauma and our 
chaos aside for the good of our children. Yes. And that will help, that structure will help a child to grow. What do you think, you know, being a prodigal in today's world is a complex issue. It is. Right? So how do we dig through those misconceptions, those common beliefs? How do, how do we do that? Right. Well, you know, I was under this wrong belief for many years mm -hmm. that if I lived right and did right, everything else would turn out right. <laughs> well, when you've got three teenagers <laughs> in this crazy world, uh, that's not true. That's yeah. a lie. So I'm only laughing because I thought all the same things. I thought, you know, I'm, I'm a good little Christian girl, right? I go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Um, you know, I took him to all the things, right? And I thought, okay, that was my thought process. If I do all this right, then I will have a good result. So when I saw our son start to doubt the Christian faith, when I saw that, I, I'm now, a sh you know, I feel badly that I thought this, but I thought, where did I go wrong? Right. Like, how did this happen? Right. Like, I love Jesus so much. How did this happen? And, you know, of course, the enemy brought up all the stupid things I did as a mom. Um, it's warfare. It is. It is. And I, I really want to talk on that really today about this guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of the double-edged sword as a believer because you immediately start thinking, what are my Christian friends going to think when they find out? Uh, I'm so ashamed that my child is on the front page or in the right. in the news that they've been right. arrested mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. Yeah. Listen, I want a parent to hear today, or a grandparent. Many grandparents are raising right. children. Listen, do not carry that guilt. That's right. Because that's getting you nowhere. Right. And we don't really, we don't, we cannot carry no. that in the parenting. And people that are, really love the Lord. A, a friend of mine, one day I'm watching the news and I saw their son on the news fleeing from the police. Stolen car, blah, blah. And I just started praying because I thought, how awful for my friend. And I just prayed that people would not judge and that they could just get through that tough time with prayer and all that followed. Uh, so I think we have to be careful uh, not to think, well, you know, if you would have raised your kid right, like nothing bad would have gone wrong. Right. Because that happens when people have children that are not prodigals, right? They just kind of go right. through and there can be that judgment and that stigma. And I think we need to let go of that. We do. And that's why this is so important today, because I hope after viewing this and, and learning all about this, that they're gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna go to somebody else today yes. and say, I'm struggling with a child that is making poor choices mm -hmm. and I'm not hiding it anymore. Right. And would you help me? That's would right. you pray with me? That's right. Because there's power in agreement. Yes. And when we keep things secret, now I don't think people should share all of it on social media, <laughs> right? And with everybody, but find a few people that seem like they're safe, that are compassionate and understanding and say, this is not getting better, right? And right. I need some people to join with me. Like, right. I know this isn't your kid, but I need some prayer help. I think that also helps the isolation and the stigma. Oh, absolutely. And to find out that other people might be struggling with the same thing. Right, right. And I also want to add this too. When you're out looking for someone to trust, you do want to guard it, meaning you want somebody that's going to believe that God can turn it around. Amen. You want somebody that's going to speak life and not death. Amen. And so that's very important. So be careful mm -hmm. who you choose to share your struggles with because you want to share the hope and the faith. That's that, right. Listen, this is just a part of a story and they're just in a chapter. Right, right. And you don't want people like to say, well, you know, if they're into drugs, well, that's just going to be the story their whole life because that's not true. No. It's not a life no. sentence. It's for freedom that he made us free. That's right. And so I think I appreciate you saying that we really do have to look for people who have faith, who have character, right? And that will agree with us in prayer. So, you know, Lane, it's also hard when this happens. The family can fall apart. Um, there can be estrangement with the prodigal. What guidance would you offer, like if the family might be at a reconnect phase? What what would you offer then? Well, I think it's vital. See, I don't believe any story is over. 
Amen. I am a believer that you have until your last breath. Yes. So if you're out there and you have this urge to reconnect, to start again, to mm-hmm. start over, the first thing you do is go to that loved one that has made these cho- choices that really aren't congruent to what you hope to right. dream or maybe self-destructive. Mm-hmm. You just start with, listen, today I love you. That's right. How can we move forward? How can I help you? And what I'm saying, open the line of communication because the way I feel, if we can keep talking. Mm -hmm. Now remember, it took my first prodigal, my oldest prodigal, many, many years, Monica. But the key was keeping the communication. And I know we'll talk about that later. Because you want them to know, right? that the light is always on. Yes. They can come home. Yes. There's room for a turnaround here, right? There's room for grace and mercy. And I think even if a prodigal seems hardened and seems callous, do you think that our words maybe still get through? Yes, I think those are seeds. What you're doing is really, you're nurturing and you're stewarding this beautiful masterpiece God yes. trusted you with, and that's your child. And you just start seeding you know, this is going to turn around. This doesn't define who you are. You start saying these things and sooner than later, there's a cultivation that will happen. That's right. Because God's word never returns void. And we have to remember that and walk in that and stand in that and rest in that. And so we're going to do some more shows on this because we're out of time here. But there is so much for parents to know, to learn, and to grow. So stay with me. Okay. I will do this some more. So I want you to stay with us. We've got so much to talk about over this prodigal series on Bridges. Uh, if you need the show notes, you can go to bridgeswithmonica.com and you can find everything you need right there. Life can be hard and days can be long. So if you're looking for hope for the journey, monicaschmelter.com is a great place to get started. On monicaschmelter.com, you'll find Monica's teachings on demand. And if you're looking to really grow your faith, you'll find online extras are available with every teaching. So don't wait another day. Get started now at monicaschmelter.com and you will find hope for the journey. If you're in a crisis, I want to give you some hope for the journey. While our first response to a crisis might be to try to fix it, to try to see what we can do to make it go away, sometimes what we need to do is give ourselves permission and say it's okay to take a minute, a minute to take a deep breath, to pause from all of the crazy, to ask God for his wisdom, for his direction in the crisis, and just to sit still, to be still and know that he's God and to allow God to give you comfort right in the middle of your crisis. So today's hope for the journey is, it's okay to need a minute, and I'll see you next time with more hope for the journey.